Next on News Talk AM 1480, WLEA, the Newsmaker Show with Kevin Doran. Brian O'Neill in for Kevin Dorn on today, the second day of 2015 with Dr. Robert Heineman, Alfred University. Dr. Heineman, thanks for joining us. Dr. Heineman, Washington Post reporting that your candidate, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush, has resigned all from all of his uh, corporate and nonprofit board memberships, including his own education foundation. That's what uh, his office says. Your thoughts there? Well, uh, Brian, um, Kevin uh, Dorn has a tendency to uh, allocate my candidates to me uh, over the Your years. Um, yes, I'm not certain he's my candidate. Um, but uh, two points there, I think. One, <clears throat> clearly he wants to divorce himself from any of these corporations uh, in terms of having to defend what's going on uh, on their part, uh, who knows where and what. Uh, he just wants to separate that, which indicates, I think, pretty clearly that he's making a concerted effort uh, to run uh, for the presidency. My problem is, of course, as you know, I supported Romney uh, the first time he ran, and I supported him the second time he ran, and was, in fact, uh, pretty deeply, well, I don't know, deeply, but pretty uh, seriously involved in the second run in New York in terms of working with people and lining up delegates and that sort of thing. So my uh, quandary is really if the Romney people call me again, that's going to be a that's going to be a tough decision. Uh, Who do we please, the Romneys or the Bushes? Well, it's not a question of pleasing from my perspective because I tend not to please many people regardless. <laughs> but the point is, who uh, whom would you support as the person to win and help the country? And so I don't know. I, I Romney may well back off, and I think that's what a lot of Jeb Bush is doing right now is pushing pretty hard right now, um, and uh, maybe it, uh, Romney and his people will will back off. I don't know. Uh, I I hope they can reach some sort of accommodation. Any predictions for 2015 as far as the presidential race goes? 2015? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, uh, I as you know, I don't make predictions, uh, Brian. I simply analyze the facts as they, they are out there. Well, one fact that's come in that's kind of interesting, Dr. Heineman, this touches on a state issue for a moment. Uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo is beginning the year butting heads with the New York State Teachers Union, NYSUT. Uh They stood outside the governor's mansion on New Year's Eve, uh, the head of NYSUT. Uh, Karen uh, Maggie was out there with a megaphone uh, singing <laughs> singing yeah. uh, anti-Cuomo songs. Yeah, uh, what wonderful. To be a public official today, it's just, it's just a great, great thing. Well, she sang a parody of All Lang Syne, uh, where she, the theme of it was that Cuomo was clueless, and there was a teacher out on the street uh, doing a rap. Apparently he's also a rapper in addition to being an Albany teacher. And he was. I wonder if he can read and write. In addition to rap, uh, that would be yes. And uh, so, Cuomo, but Cuomo came out and talked to the reporters, and he said that the union represents the teachers, and that he, Governor Cuomo, represents the students. So it appears that the battle between uh, Cuomo and the teachers' union continues. How is it that with the you know you hear, for example, Bill Noje talking about? how powerful the teachers' unions are politically in New York State. How is it that Cuomo was able to win in November with, if the teachers' union is that powerful? Well, I think they hurt him. I think they hurt him a lot uh, up in the uh, Albany area and some of these other areas. And I think uh, Astorino carried a majority of the counties in the state. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, one of the things, uh, the turnout in the city— uh, was pretty light, I think, and uh, so the organization, the party organization, uh, pretty much dominated there. Uh, but no, uh, they, they are a powerful, powerful force, and I, I guess in many respects I have to come down on uh, the side of Governor Cuomo in this sort of thing. Um, not so much upstate. Um, <clears throat> the uh, teachers and teachers' unions and the efforts upstate, I think, uh, stand out as being pretty pretty solid. But when you get down into the city, 
and some of the things that are going on with the unions in the in the uh, schools in the cities, uh, that's a whole different story there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, not to the benefit of uh, uh, better education for uh, students. Now, there's no question that teachers that carry a pretty heavy burden in a lot of the regulations and things that they have to deal with. Um, <clears throat> but I think this is one of the reasons why charter schools have increasingly uh, gained in popularity um, in terms of their ability to act in a certain respect outside state regulations and outside the union. The unions control. argue that Cuomo is in the pocket of the charter schools because Cuomo's taken money from some charter yeah. school donors. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I think they can argue all they want on that. I think the money that they pour into the, the races uh, probably dwarfs anything that charter school advocates have uh, gotten. And, and let's think on this just a minute, Brian. Um, uh, to whose benefit is the money that um, the unions is pouring into these races? I mean, that's to benefit themselves and their members. I mean, how many people are going to be pouring money in to benefit charter schools. Now, there are some people out there, <clears throat> excuse me, concerned about education and concerned uh, from another, a few other perspectives uh, that are willing to throw, mo- uh, throw money into behind the charter schools. But in terms of personal benefit and such, I don't think there's much to be gained there. So I can't believe that uh, that can offset the kind of money that the teachers union can pour in. Critics say that Cuomo is politically this way, fiscally conservative, socially liberal. I think he would even admit that. They also say that Cuomo wants to be president. Political science question for you, Dr. Heinemann. Yes, yes. I'm a political scientist. There we go. Can someone who, a candidate who is socially liberal, fiscally conservative, do you see a candidate like that winning the White House? Oh, yeah. I think that uh, that'd be a combination to be pretty attractive. Uh, and uh, but I don't think uh, in uh, his position now that Cuomo is uh, deliberately uh, kind of trying to balance these things in terms of a national run. I think he is deliberately trying to balance these things in terms of uh, being governor of New York. How many Republicans fit the description that I just gave of Andrew Cuomo, socially liberal, fiscally conservative? How many of the con- of the Republicans? kind of distance themselves from the Tea Party, and, you know, they they support gay marriage and abortion and whatnot, and uh, they don't want to hear about the social issues. They just want someone to keep their taxes down and whatnot. How much much of the Republican Party do you think is like that? Well, I think uh, in the conservative movement, you have a whole uh, strand of uh, conservatives who fit that uh, very, very well. You have the so-called libertarians, who uh, the Cato Institute, for example, is a, a big proponent of this libertarian approach, and there are others, um, and their concerns are primarily economic and uh, fiscal, uh, low taxes, uh, low regulation of business, and that sort of thing, and their views on abortion, gay marriage, and such. Frankly, they don't care much uh, about those issues. They're not terribly important to them, and. Uh, so you have that whole strand. And I think Rand Paul at this point may well fall in that uh, category. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's a darling of the uh, cons- uh Do you see him being on the ticket? No. How come? Well, because I don't think he has that much to offer. Um, I think he's articulate, and I think he's a fine man. Don't get me wrong at all. But uh, in terms of being able to provide electoral uh, clout and uh, adding to the base of a Republican who wants to push— uh, the Republicans got to get into um, <clears throat> some of these areas where they haven't uh, been able to carry. Uh, and I noticed uh, in an article I was reading the other day, uh, someone made the point that there are 242 electoral votes uh, in the country that have not gone Republican since 1994 or 1992. And you need only 270 to win. So uh, the Republicans got to begin looking at some of these uh, states that uh, they uh, can't or have had trouble carrying. And, and as you know, uh, the uh, New York, California, I don't, they haven't gone Republican, well, what, since, since Reagan, I would guess. Um, so there you've got, uh, what, 100 and, yeah, well, 80-some votes, maybe 90, 
and you can throw in a few more. So it may well be that there's a, a huge number of electoral votes out there that the Republicans have never haven't been able to carry in the last 20 years. They got to be looking toward those. So you got to put together a ticket that can uh, uh, draw some of those in. If New York population goes down as much as uh, some of saying it has been, does that affect the electoral college? Oh, absolutely, in New York? absolutely. Uh, but it won't uh, have an effect until after uh, 2020. So we'll be able to be kind of a uh, rotten borough as they used to have in England, where uh, you know the population change left some of these uh, parliamentary districts basically uh, empty, but they still elected uh, representatives. We won't be that bad, of course. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I think if the population outflow continues, and I don't see any reason why it's going to stop, especially with these decisions like Governor Cuomo on fracking and such, uh, I mean, people are just pouring out of the state. And, um, and there's just nothing outside of maybe uh, financial um, – prosperity in uh, in the finance area in New York City. I don't see much that keeps people here right now. Spoke with uh, Carl Palladino earlier this week. Palladino seemed to think that c- the casinos were no replacement for having fracking. Oh, absolutely. He's absolutely right on that. Uh, I think what happened was uh, Cuomo's decision on fracking has gotten so much blowback uh, in his office and in Albany that uh, he feels a necessity uh, with this recent decision to add an, another casino to the southern tier uh, is his attempt to kind of um, uh, ameliorate some of this uh, feedback. But uh, it's it's very, very bad out there, Brian, in, in uh, western New York and especially in the southern tier. You go and perhaps you've traveled around some of these uh, villages and hamlets in uh, Chautauqua, C- Cattaraugus, Steuben, Allegheny County, those people, I mean, they're they are living uh, dirt poor out there, and uh, if there's jobs across the border, uh, you know, they're going to head across the border. Yeah, a couple I, of let me just say, in casino in the Binghamton Broome County area, <laughs> so I'm not going to make it's hardly makes a dent. I mean, it's not right. Uh, a couple of, uh, I guess you'd say, Big Brother is watching type issues. The oh, F- I see. Yeah. FBI Drudge is reporting that FBI says that Sony hackers are threatening to hack a media organization. I don't think the media organization... Just a minute. Sony hackers. These are the people who hack Sony. Right. Okay. Now, after that report came out from the FBI, somebody came out and said on Twitter that uh, they faked the FBI out, that that's not a serious threat. Whether that's the case or not, don't know at this time. However, here's the question, Dr. Heineman. Well, I think it is isn't uh, a problem that's going to be increasingly a problem and going to get a lot worse. Uh, I think one of the basic uh, problems is, and I might say, without divulging any names or anything, one of our students, uh, our graduates, is uh, head of security for the FBI now. He's just been promoted, and he's been talking to us in our criminal justice program. And uh, for several, well, several months ago, he was saying, look, we've got to have in the FBI, we've got to have more people in data analysis, who can handle data, and that's so he obviously was aware that something like this, this audit, was coming down, criticizing the FBI's ability uh, to handle large amounts of data, and that's the problem is that the government doesn't pay enough to keep these guys on board, so that uh, Google and uh, Facebook and uh, um, all these other Microsoft and all these other companies. I mean, they're paying huge, huge salaries. And the government, of course, is limited about how much you can pay under the civil service or merit service or whatever you want to call it. They just cannot attract the kind of people that are out there and have the ability to do this hacking and uh, have the ability to stymie this hacking. And so uh, uh, really this is an interesting situation where the government is being kind of left out here uh, in their ability to... So they'll go to the Googles and the Zuckerberg types to ask the FBI being They'll there. have to. They'll have to get some of these people on board, I think. And I think that's what with uh, we saw that with the uh, Affordable Health Care Act. Um, uh, Sebelius simply couldn't get the uh, um, web page up to, to take the applications and uh, uh, process them properly. 
uh, because the government just didn't have the uh, capability. And so they went to Accenture and hired them to do it. And uh, this last round uh, seems to have gone pretty well. So good old private industry out there, Brian, is uh, holding this country together again. And, and the farmers, let me add. <laughs> one, one other question on this issue of uh, Big Brother is Washington. Washington Times reported that uh, the head of the Senate Judiciary Committee wants answers from the Obama administration on something called cell site simulators. Uh, those are uh, something on uh, cell towers, apparently, which uh, uh, police and law enforcement use to track suspects who have a cell phone on them. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. They say that these... Um, Simulators also have the potential to capture information on cell phones uh, in the vicinity, and right. uh, uh, the uh, the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee sent off a letter to the Attorney General's office, the U.S. Attorney General's office, and Homeland Security, and they want to know what the federal policy is, well, I, yeah. and, you know, to prevent. Yeah. Well, no, I. I, I can understand they're wanting to know what the federal policy is. It would be nice if they let Congress in on <laughs> what they're doing. But the day and age where you got privacy on your cell phone and contact calls, your emails, that is past. Forget it. Uh, we've moved into an era where whatever you say, et cetera, is going to be monitored. And uh, you've seen again and again where a lot of this stuff is so-called goes viral. You know, somebody does say, well, it kicks a cat or kicks a dog or beats up somebody. Well, what's, sure. and all of a sudden it's all over the place. So uh, in some ways that may be good. I don't know. But the point is the idea that what you're saying, um, they might just as well be talking into this mic here and letting everybody listen in. That's oh, yeah. Just, that's just the way it is. Now, if you want to go back to writing letters, uh, no, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, maybe the post office can gain a little something from this. But the idea that you got privacy in that, I, I just think that's a wild goose chase. But the, to know what they're doing, that's another story. The host of this show has noted before that your emails are always yes and no and not filled with a lot of editorial comments about this, that, and the other thing. When I'm under oath in court, I want to be able to be truthful without embarrassing myself. Yes. Are they watching you, Dr. Bob? I think they are, yes, uh, Brian, uh, but uh, I just I just ignore them. You uh, keep your nose clean. I, I set uh, a routine. That's what I do and at 11 o'clock yes. every day. And yes, and no, and, and that, right. that sort of thing. That's where I am. I yep. got gotcha. you. Yeah, and I think everybody else ought to think in those terms, too. Is that why you don't do the interviews over the phone? Um, no, no. <laughs> that's a... That's a thought, but no, that doesn't worry me too much. <laughs> Dr. Heineman, thanks for joining us today. Well, uh, Happy New Year to everyone, and thanks for having me on.